have a good day. 73. A couple of stations there. I'm not going to hold it too long, but it was a, a Mike Mike Zero, I think. Go ahead. Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, if you're a long time watcher of my videos, then you'll know that I love the Hermes Light 2 HF SDR transceiver. But one thing that it lacks is output power. Now, just to make it clear, I have no issue with QRP and 5 watts from the Hermes Light 2 can provide amazing results. However, for those that like to run the standard 100 watts from their HF setup, then an amp is needed. Now, I've featured this amp before on the channel, and that's because it's a perfect match for the Hermes Light 2. It also incorporates a built-in ATU, so having a 100 watt amplifier with a built-in ATU is just the perfect solution for beefing up that Hermes Light 2. Now, incidentally, I got this XPA125B from Radio Oddity. Now, check the link in the description for a discount code if you want to get one yourself. Now, while we can control when the amplifier goes into transmit from the rear PTT port on the Hermes Light, we need a little bit of extra work to make the Hermes Light 2 control the band switching within the amplifier. Now, while it's not hard to change bands on the amp just by pressing a button a couple of times, it's more convenient to have the amp change bands when you change bands within your SDR software. So the 125B uses band volts to change band, a single pin on its accessory port. Now different voltages equates to different bands. The Hermes Light 2 does actually have a specific PWM pin on the main board. And when enabled within the popular Thetis software, it will provide a signal to change the band volts. However, this does require a small circuit to be built which acts as a low pass filter. I much prefer to use SDR console application as I also use this for working through QA100. But SDR console does not currently have this feature to utilize the band volts PWM pin on the Hermes Light 2. But there is another way in which we can generate the required band volts while still using SDR console. And that is to piggyback onto the I2C bus that goes between the Hermes Light 2 main board and the popular N2 ADR filter board. Now EA3 IGT released some Arduino code and information on how they incorporated a PA70 with the Hermes Light 2 with the use of a separate filter board. Now using parts of his code to grab the I2C data that goes between the main board and the N2 ADR filter board, I was able to create my own band vault solution meaning that I could still use SDR console and add other I2C devices along the way. Now you may notice that there are two Arduino Nanos being used in this project. Well, that's because to generate the band volts, I'm using a digital to analog converter to provide the accurate DC voltage needed by the amp for each band. But the DAC is controlled via I2C. And as we're already using one Arduino as an I2C slave to read the band data, I needed to control the DAC as a master. The two Arduinos communicate with each other using the serial ports on the Arduinos themselves. So you just connect RX to TX and TX to RX. So for this to work, I needed two Arduino programs, which I'll show you in a moment. Now also on the board, there's a little voltage converter, which takes 12 volts from the Hermes light and brings it down to five volts DC. And then this powers the two Arduinos and the DAC. Now you might be wondering why I use the DAC instead of generating a band volt signal using a digital PWM pin and a low pass filter on the first Arduino. Well, by having two Arduinos, I'm able to use the second Arduino as an I2C master, which means I can then add other devices in the future, such as an OLED to display other information or whatever I want. So here are the two Arduino programs. Now the one on the left runs on the Arduino which taps into the Hermes Light 2 I2C bus. This monitors for band change. Now once a band change has been detected, it then sends that new band data. In this case, it's an ASCII string like 20 meters, 40 meters, 80, etc. to the second Arduino via the serial connection between the two. The Arduino program on the right monitors the data coming in on its serial port from the first Arduino. When it receives band data, as in an ASCII string that it recognizes, it then sends a command to the DAC to output the voltage according to that band. 
The DAC output values were chosen by trial and error using a voltmeter connected to the output pin of the DAC board before I connected it live to the amplifier's accessory port. Now I've uploaded these two Arduino projects to my GitHub page and I'll link below for those of you that are interested in seeing the code in more detail. These two wires here are the I2C tap. We then use this red and brown wire for a 12 volt line and a ground which goes off to power the board I made. This yellow wire is a ground pin for the amp. The orange wire is the output from the DAC for the band volts to the amp. And this yellow wire is soldered to the EXTR port on the underside of the filter board, which provides the PTT line. As I didn't purchase the official case for this Hermes Light 2 board, I had to improvise with the cooling of the two RF output transistors. Now this is just a bent piece of copper resting on the top of the two transistors, but between them is a piece of thermal padding to stop any shorts, but provide a clean heat transfer method to the copper plate and then onto the casing. Now just make sure that there's no connection shorting on the casing once it's all put together. Otherwise you'll be highly disappointed when you see that little puff of smoke. I then made up a cable to connect onto the back of the Hermes Light 2 and then directly into the Zygu XPA 125B 100 watt HF amplifier. Now with everything running and connected, it's now time to test. Now as you can see here, I'm changing the bands on SDR console. The band is then automatically changing on the amplifier. So everything seems to be working. Now you may notice that some don't change like 10 and 12 meters or even 60 and 40 meters. Now this is because the amplifier actually uses the same filter configuration for those bands. So there's no need to change them specifically. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and it's inspired you to work with Arduinos and ham radio. It's amazing what you can do with these little gadgets to make things work in our hobby. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.